Fifteen miles south of San Antonio, Texas, lies the small, quiet town of Elmendorf, a community of friendly, honorable, law-abiding people. Save for one former resident, the vile, murderous Joseph D. Ball, who had a novel way of eradicating evidence. But first, please don't forget to subscribe, like, leave a comment, as your support keeps the channel going. Now, let's slide into the story. Joseph Douglas Ball was a native son of Elmendorf, Texas, born on January 7, 1896. Although he was a member of one of the wealthier families, he grew up with a rebellious and almost cruel demeanor. He served on the front lines in World War I, where he was exposed to the trauma and gruesome visions of trench warfare. When it was over, he returned to Elmendorf and set about becoming a businessman. Unfortunately, Joe's idea of legitimate business was a little warped. Bootlegging was how he got his start, taking advantage of prohibition to sell illegal liquor to those who could afford it. Intimidation and violence were his tools to keep competition out of the way. When Prohibition ended, he used his profits to open a saloon. The Sociable Inn, he called it. And for a while, financially at least, things looked pretty good. He built a small pond in the back of his tavern where he kept six alligators as pets. He used them as a tourist trap attracting customers to the saloon during feeding time, which consisted of live cats and dogs. Now, you think this one thing would get him arrested, or at the very least fined, but it was a different era, a time when regulations covering exotic wildlife, their care and safety measures around them, were loosely interpreted. The sociable inn was also known for its pretty waitresses, who for some reason, Joe failed to keep on staff for very long. Many of them leaving unexpectedly, in the middle of the night, without even collecting their pay for parts unknown. Suspicion finally arrived for Joe when the families of two of those waitresses Minnie Goddard and Julia Turner went to police to ask for help investigating their disappearance. Bear County officers and Texas Rangers questioned Joe relentlessly, but he would not budge, asserting that the two women just quit their jobs and left them. No explanation and no knowledge of where they might have gone. The case appeared to be a dead end, until two more people disappeared the following month. The authorities continued their investigation questioning anyone who had come in contact with the women or had dealings with Mr. Ball. Finally, the big break. One of Joe's neighbors, William Sneed, came forward and said he had witnessed Joe cut up meat from a human body and feed it to his gators. He also admitted to having helped Joe dispose of the waitress's bodies. Joe had shot the women when they rejected his advances, then figured he could dispose of the evidence using his hungry pets. Armed with that information, the Texas Rangers came for Joe on September 24, 1938. When he saw the officers, Joe realized it was over. He rang up a no-sale on his gas register, then shot himself. Later. Pieces of one of the women's bodies were found in the alligator enclosure behind the saloon. The story of Joe's horrible act was sensationalized by state newspapers, authorities suspecting that as many as 20 women or more, many of whom were from other towns or transient, found their end at Joe's hands and his pet stomachs. There was discussion about what to do with Joe's alligators. Most people in town wanted to be rid of them, or turn them into high-priced fashion accessories. But more merciful heads prevailed, so they were gathered up and donated to the San Antonio Zoo, where they became favorite attractions over the years, their story inspiring horror B-grade movies in the 70s like Eaten Alive. 
So, when you visit the San Antonio Zoo and head to the reptile section of the park, you can say that you have stared into the eyes of death, that you have experienced an encounter with a true man-eater, or at least one of their descendants. Hey, thanks for watching. This is my first viewer requested video, so a big thank you to Sherry Huckabay. I had never heard of the story and it was a lot of fun to research. Oh, and please don't forget to subscribe because more videos are on the way. See you later.